Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in the past I have got plenty of questions related to DAG on this channel which I have never answered. So these questions were like is it really necessary to invest in a DAG? If I am have an IEM do I really need to get a DAG to uh, explore it to its full potential? How much amount of sound difference can I expect after adding a DAG to my audio setup? Which brand should I go for? And the last one being DAGs are too expensive. So I believe I'll try to answer all these questions as best as possible and by the end of the video you will have the fair idea about whether you should get a DAC or not. So let's start with the basics. So when I say starting off with the basics, it all starts with the word DAC. So here comes the first question. Why do we actually need a DAC? So the thing here is all sorts of audio that you're listening to on from Spotify or Ghana.com and even the videos that you're watching on YouTube or maybe watching some movies on Netflix. So all this content is saved on some hard drives in digital format so you are actually accessing all this content maybe from some cloud services or maybe you are you have saved all these things to your laptop or your pc so you need all that content to be played on some analog devices now analog devices when i say it all refers to your tws's your earphones your headphones your home theaters so all these kind of speakers that i'm talking is an analog device so, so you actually need a digital format to be played on an analog device and for that reason you need a digital to analog converter so uh, some sort of digital to analog conversion already happens locally on the devices itself like your smartphones like your computer you have your graphics card in that you have your motherboard even the home theater you are getting it from the market it has some sort of amplifier and a digital to analog converter inbuilt so that it can read all that digital files and it can play that on a hardware which is your uh, speakers now with this comes our second question why do we need a DAC when you already have DACs built in into almost everything that we are using so the answer here is that all sorts of DACs that are inbuilt into your home theaters your TVs your laptops these are not that efficient they do the job of creating that analog waveform from a digital one but that job is not that efficient but you have, when you're getting a dedicated DAC from the market the DAC chips installed are way too powerful these are very professional devices and they tend to create that analog signal as best as possible you can say that conversion is more efficient and that is the reason when you add these devices to your setup they will make your entire setup sound way more better so that is the reason uh, you should get a dedicated DAC before I want to move ahead I want to talk about some of the compression techniques like your mp3 AAC WAV FLAC and lossless music which is being popular these days so let's say you are in a recording studio and you want to record some song so initially that song will be recorded onto some CD and this song is being recorded at 16 bit 44,000 kilohertz but when you actually want to save this song onto some cloud services you need to compress that song in order to save space so when you talk about the mp3 compression it is a kind of compression that removes all necessary bits from that good quality signal and the advantage here is that this mp3 format is very small in size when we talk about an AAC format the amount of information AAC has is much more than mp3 but disadvantage here is that the file size is slightly more bigger and when it comes to a WAV format Format. so it is kind of a format which is treated as lossless the information being is being saved at 32 bit and 96,000 kilohertz which is even more than CD quality so these are the kind of compression techniques that we are dealing with now let's say you add a DAC to your system and you are feeding and a song which is there in the mp3 format so the recreated analog signal the DAC is creating will not be as good but if you are feeding an AAC signal the signal will be better and if you are feeding a WAV signal so it will be even more better so uh, if you're adding a DAC to your system, it's much more important that you add a good quality signal so that you get the best output. Now, whatever I've explained to you till now can be understood in a slightly better way by looking at these waveforms. So this waveform you're looking at is an analog waveform. First, we will convert this waveform into a digital one. Then we will add some compression so that signal size gets smaller. Finally, you will get this waveform at your end in digital format if you're accessing any cloud services. And then the inbuilt DAC chips in your computers or laptops or maybe any external DAC, they will tend to create that analog waveform back from this digital one. How well it is able to do that depends on the quality of DAC. So basically, if you're getting any DAC from the market, it's doing the same job, creating analog waveform back from a digital one. With this comes our next question, how much amount of improvement can you expect after adding a DAC? So people are using different kinds of equipments at their end. Some people are using headphones, some are using earphones and some are using IEM. So let's say you add a DAC to your earphone. So you can say, you will really enjoy the kind of performance you will get from your cheap 500 rupees earphone after adding a DAC. It's just going to blow your mind. But uh, if you are adding the same DAC to an IEM, which are already sounding better than an earphone, so that improvement will not be too high. Definitely, you will enjoy hearing and uh, hearing music from this particular thing. But if the improvement was 50% after combining it with an earphone, so that will only remain 30 or 20% 
after combining with an IEM. If you are talking about speakers, so let's talk about a smart speaker. So initially I connected my DAC to my Alexa and improvement was massive. I never heard my Amazon Alexa sounding so better that I could uh, even watch a movie with that, but I did and the experience was just too good. But if I connect my same DAC to my 5.1 channel home theater, which is already sounding so much better than my smart speaker, so the improvement will not be that high. So it all depends on uh, what kind of uh, system or speaker you're using and what a DAC is actually doing to that system. With this comes our last question, uh, what brand should I go for because DACs are expensive. So yes, DACs are expensive and initially if you're starting out, just invest somewhere between three to 5,000 rupees and get a normal DAC. And with after adding that kind of DAC to your system, you will come to know that what kind of sound improvement you can expect. And later on, you can invest more if you're not satisfied. So I hope I made this video very clear even still if you have some more doubts you can drop your questions in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe see you in the next one take care